not to go after these people. Um, and I was like, well, shit, I'm your soldier right here. Fellow savages, thank you so much for clicking the video. My name is Mitchell R. Tucker, and this is one of the most important videos I've done, at least in a really long time. Guys, I need your help. I need you to like, subscribe, comment, push this video out to as many people as possible because this is important. We have to get this message out. You know, I live by convictions. I hope to God you live by some convictions, but it's very seldom here in America that we're forced to make a decision. And the decision goes like this if we go against our convictions, we can live. But if we make the decision, if we choose based on our convictions, we're essentially signing our death warrant. It might happen in other countries. I know it does, but we're blessed here in America. It doesn't happen very often, but it's happening right now to our guest, Mr. Chad Carswell. It's happening right now. I need you guys to get this message out. I learned a long time ago, though, if you just shut up and let the person being interviewed speak, typically the content turns out so much better. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Chad. Thank you so much for being here. I'm blessed to have you, brother. Go ahead and share your story with us. Yeah, um, appreciate you having me on. Um, so, you know, uh, the first thing that I'm, I'm very passionate about making sure that people understand when it comes to this is I'm not anti-vax. Um, I'm pro-choice. There's a big difference in somebody that's anti-vax or, or any of that. Those people are against the vaccine and, and don't believe anybody should get it or any of that. I'm one of those people that if you think it's healthy for you and it's what's best for you, then by all means, get it. Um, this isn't political to me. Uh, I had some you know genius earlier tell me that my president was the reason that I wasn't getting it. And I said, so Joe Biden's the reason I'm not getting it? Like, I'm an American. Biden's my president right now, you know? Um, but either way, the reason that, uh, you know, all this is kind of taking place is I'm on the kidney transplant list. I've obviously had um, some major health issues. I used to weigh over 400 pounds. Um, I got top two diabetes. I lost both my legs and my double amputee. Um, I've had six heart attacks, been septic, septic over 50 times. Um, you know, just had COVID twice, should have died multiple times, and I'm still here. Um, developed uh, kidney failure because of the vancomycin that they pumped in me while I was going through the issues with my legs. And um, so I've been on dialysis for a little over a year and a half. Um, needing a transplant, my kidney function has went from 20% to 4% in the last year. Uh, so ultimately, you know, if I don't get a kidney, I'm not going to be here. Um, but anyway, we started the process, got the referral sent to Baptist Hospital, who has amputated both legs. They did my open heart surgery. They touched and cut and, you know, been on every part of my body. Um, went there in December, went through the whole process, um, had all the scans done. Got there at 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, took all my blood, did everything, MRIs, CT scans, came in, told me, listen, man, you know, you're, you're healthy as can be other than your kidney function. You're a great candidate for a transplant. Um, you know, we should be ready to move forward. I said, great. They verified my insurance, came back in with the nurse practitioner, and they said, the last thing we need to talk about is your vaccination status. And I said, yeah, there's nothing really for us to talk about when it comes to that because it's not up for debate. And he said, well, um, with us, the only way we're going to put you on the list is if you get a vaccine, if you get the shot. And um, he asked me if it was, uh, and he asked me why I was against it. And I said, you really want to open those can of worms? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, okay. And the first question I asked him was, was, um, you know, basically why in England, who's one of the most top five vaccinated countries in the world, over 60% of the population were fully vaccinated. And he said, well, they smoke more. And I'm like, I don't know if you've ever been to Burke County, North Carolina, but everybody has a pack of Marlboros and a can of Copenhagen in their pocket. Like, that's not true. And then, um, you know, I asked him where the flu went. And he said, oh, that's easy. You know, we socially distanced. We started wearing our mask and we stayed home. And I looked at him and I said, well, I'm curious because didn't Fauci and the CDC say that wearing your mask, staying home and socially distancing would make the COVID numbers drop? but they rose. So how did flu go away, but COVID didn't? Right. And um, then I asked him if he watched sports. I'm like, hell, there's 100,000 people out there, you know, every single day that are, you know, watching sports events and they're not socially distanced and they're not staying at home and they're not doing any of that stuff. And um, well, then he ultimately, you know, he, he realized he was backed into a corner and he couldn't, he realized he wasn't dealing with just some dumb redneck from Burke County at that point. And um, he told me that, uh, 
He's like, well, you understand if you don't get it, you'll die. And I said, well, I guess I'm going to die. Like, I mean, it's not really. He said, you sure you don't need to think about it or talk to your family? I said, I'm 38 years old, man. I made my own decisions. I don't need to talk to anybody. They support me, whatever I choose to do. And, um, you know, he ultimately said, okay. And then he said the clinical director would want to talk to me. And I said, if he just wants to come in here and try and talk me into getting this vaccine, I'm not staying here any longer. And I sat there for about 10 minutes and waited on him. He never came, so I left. And then the clinical director called me on the phone, Dr. Prada from um, Baptist Hospital, and he told me that he fully agreed with everything that I said. If it was up to him, that he wouldn't require me to get the vaccine, that he understood and I was obviously intelligent in what I'd, I had read about and what I believed in, and um, but that the panel would be the one to require me to get it. And, you know, that's pretty much what, what happened. So I, you know, told him, hey, I'm out. It's not happening. And Media caught wind of it, and now here we are today on every news channel and newspaper and news broadcast there is in the world. Wow. You know what's so ironic? And I, I, so I looked up the hospital's policy because this just blew my mind. So I looked up the hospital policy, and according to their policy, the reason that they require the vaccine is because once you get a transplant, your immune system is low or whatever, and they do it to protect the patient, right? So they're not going to give you a transplant until you get the vaccine so that you can have protection. But if they don't give you the transplant, you, you're going to die. <laughs> so, yeah, the funny thing is, is they wouldn't. You know, I asked them, hey, well, test my natural antibodies, you know, because I've had COVID twice. The last time was in September. I said, you know, you talk about all these scientists and doctors, these same scientists and doctors say that if you've had it and you survived it, you're safer than the person who's vaccinated. Yeah. And just test my natural antibodies. They said, no, it doesn't work that way. It's about the shot. And they clearly straight out just said, you know, hey, it's about the shot. So it's about control. It's not about, you know, any of that. It's just straight up about the shot. I agree with you 100%. And I'm the same way. I'm not anti-vax. I could care less if you get it. But I think that ultimately you should have the choice. I mean, that's just, they're taking the choice away from people. Yeah, I fought for this country. I fought for my rights. I was in operation in enduring freedom during 9-11. And, uh, you know, those, uh, this, this is not even about me. Like if I get a kidney, great, but I want the world to be better in 10 years because of this. And if that means it costs my life, I guess, like I said, we'll have a real life Braveheart situation going on here because, you know, I'm not willing to, to lay down and, and just roll over just because they tell me to. Yeah. And that goes into my next question I had. So there is no circumstance whatsoever. You're on your deathbed right now. And they say, Hey, just take the shot. We'll give you the transplant. There's no circumstance there that. No, I was actually on um, inside edition. You'll see that the, it's Aaron tonight, but you know, she tried to pin me into a corner and ask me that question. I said, let me make this really clear, clear for you. If I'm laying on my deathbed and they roll a kidney in, in a suitcase and they say, listen, Chad, we'll take you into surgery right now. And this kidney will let you live. Or, and all you have to do is take this shot. I'm going to look at them. I'm going to push the thing out my door by myself. <laughs> and I'm going to throw the deuces up and tell them I'll see you on the other side. Because, listen, man, when I pass, I'm not going to hurt anymore, man. No more dialysis. No more needles. No more putting my prosthetics on. I'm strong in my faith. You know, that Jesus tells us 365 times in the Bible, do not fear. Obviously, he meant it if he said it that many times. You know, so I'm good. Um, you know, I, but no, there is absolutely zero circumstance that my mind would ever change on this topic. No. Well, wow. and uh, I'm glad you mentioned that you're obviously a man of faith. And I can tell because there's not too many people that would have the kind of faith and, and courage that you're having in this situation. And you think a lot of that has to do with your faith in Christ? Oh, man. I mean, you know, I'm not a. Uh, one thing that you'll learn, like people learn about me, I speak in churches a whole bunch. I'm a motivational speaker. I try and share my story. I've shared my journey for the last six years, and, and it's all about helping people. And but the one thing about me when it comes to this journey and this fight and this this whole you know thing is, is this is not me. This is God. Like I couldn't do this on my own. If this was just about me, I'd have quit a long time ago. But the ability that I've been blessed that. One of the greatest blessings in life that I've ever received is realizing my purpose. 
and my purpose was was to go through these struggles to be able to help people. This right here has more to do with hopefully reaching more people to say, damn, I can make it through what I've been through. This guy kept pushing, but it's about God. And that's what you have to understand is there's no special magic powers inside of me. This isn't like the Space Jam movie where, you know, Bugs Bunny drinks the magic sauce. Like there's no magic sauce. This is in everybody. You just have to decide to fight. But like I said, it's, you know, it's God. If people don't believe in God, look at me. Tell me how I'm still here. Yeah. You know, six hundred attacks, one widow maker. You know, I mean, I've been septic. People don't know what septic is. It's a massive blood infection throughout your entire body. You know, your entire body is infected. People die from it every single day. I've been in stage four kidney failure. You know, I've had heart attacks and I've had things that you should die from over and over and over. When I was in the hospital with COVID, I was on four and a half liters of oxygen, 24 pounds of fluid on me, left lung collapsed. You know, you don't believe in God. Cool. Look at me and tell me how I'm still here. Because science don't back up why I'm still here. If we go off of science, I should be dead 45 times over. Yeah. So he, he definitely has a purpose for you. 100%. And everybody else. Yeah, for sure. So um, I, I told a couple of people that me and you were going to be talking, and they, they gave me a couple of questions. One of the sure. questions was, if it comes down to the wire and you can't get the surgery mm -hmm. here, would you entertain the idea of going to another country that has a different... different Man, I'll go to the the middle of nowhere and and camp out and you know a, a desert full of king cobras if that's what it turns into i'm not worried about um you know i don't care where i have to go absolutely i'm not you know i'm not a, a you know i get asked the stupid question well will you take a vaccinated kidney well just because <laughs> I'm, again let's think about this i'm pro-choice so if someone chose to get it just because they put a kidney in me that the person got the vaccine doesn't mean I'm vaccinated. Right. You know, absolutely I'll take one. And because I'm not against people, you know, doing that. And the funny thing is now they're requiring, you know, my donors, I have well over And here's another thing. A lot of people come in and say, Hey man, you're taking somebody else's kidney because you won't follow protocol. Here's the kicker. I have over 150 people ready, willing right now to give me a kidney. Now, that doesn't mean I have 150 matches, but in the kidney program, there's a thing called the SWAT program. So if you're willing to give me a kidney and you don't match me, but you're healthy enough to donate a kidney, and let's say John Jenkins over here is needing a kidney and his sister is willing to be the donor, but she doesn't match him, but she matches me and you match him, they have a SWAT program where all four of us go into surgery at the same time and they swap. So just because they don't match me doesn't mean I still don't have donors for the transplant. Everybody that's willing to give me a kidney, most of them aren't vaccinated and most of them and every one of them don't care that I'm not. So I'm not taking a cadaver kidney from somebody else. I have people in the same situation ready and willing, you know, to, to give me one and they don't care about that. But absolutely I will I'll you know I'll swim across the ocean with my legs off if I have to to, to get one. I'm not opposed to that at all. Wow. Awesome. Well um is there any way that we can help you or support you other than getting the message out? Do you, is there a GoFundMe set up or is anything that you need help with? So um, I'm actually getting ready. I've sold merch in the past. I'm getting ready to release merch. Um, I have my life on slogan. So about five years ago when this whole thing really started and kicked off, I started hashtag life on. If you see my post on Instagram, on Facebook, everything says hashtag life on. And what that means is, is, you know, like when you need to see, you turn the light on, you flip the light switch on. That's the same way with life. When you got to live, when you got something backed into a corner, you flip the life on. You know, like it's time to go. That's what that means. And so I sell a lot of merch with that on there. Uh, I've been, I, I've never been one really good at, at asking for help. Uh, with kidney transplants, you have to raise money. You have to do fundraisers. Most people do do GoFundMes. I'm in the process of starting one because with this, the response has been so overwhelming that so many people have reached out about it and the people that are kind of um, telling me which way to go, the saying that I need it. So I don't have it yet. Um, my mom's actually in the process of making it and setting all that stuff up because I just don't have time to keep up with the updates. Uh, so that'll be done in the next day or so. Um, and then, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm getting ready to sell the merch, but you know, the, the, what means a lot to me is, you know, the support, the positivity, um, you know, being that stuff out there. And then people can come to my Facebook page. It's just Chad Carswell. 
Um, and then from there, they can follow my Chad Carswell's Fight for Life on. Um, and that just is my Fight for the Kidney page. And um, then my TikTok, just hashtag Chad Car or at Chad Carswell. Um, you know, and that's pretty much it. When my merch drops, they'll see it. And then my, you know, my GoFundMe will be set up on there. And, you know, if anybody wants to support, great. If they don't, you know, just a positive attitude and mindset. Because trust me, I've been getting told every day about 5,000 times a day to, to die. I'm wasting oxygen. I had one dude write my obituary for me the other day. under my mom. I'm, like, if you watch me on my post, I just kind of laugh at them. I tell them Jesus loves you and, you know, these guys are lost. Because the funny thing to me is, is not one of them will be brave enough to say anything to my face. You know, they're these keyboard warriors, stuff on the phone. So it doesn't phase me. And I got a bunch of people that go after them. But my mom seen the obituary and it got her all emotional. And she called me and she was like, I don't I don't know how I'm going to handle this. And, you know, I was like, just let it go, mom. But she actually commented on it. And the dude, you know, wrote this big long this guy wasted air for 38 years and you know it's uh so it's been pretty crazy so the positivity is a blessing it means a lot absolutely well you have all of our support here you're a man of conviction and i have the utmost respect for you chad i appreciate that very much yes all right sir so in ending is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we close out no nah, man you know look the the like i said for one you know with this whole thing what we all need to do and, and the world will be a lot better place is if everybody just worried about themselves, you know, if everybody just worried about what, the, what, what they're doing and what their choices were, instead of worrying about what the person next to them is, then the whole world would stop and they would understand that the media is the ones that divide us. And that's what they want is division. If you worry about just you, you can't be divided because of what somebody else is doing. You know, and that's not my only thing that I would tell people is listen, find God and find your purpose and uh, keep fighting. Don't give up. Well, Chad, we got to get you healthy because I want to see you in politics here in the future. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you so much for joining on. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. All right. Stay blessed. You too. What's up, guys? If you made it this far, thank you so much for your support. I truly appreciate it. Chad's story is absolutely insane, and I really am looking forward to having your help getting that message out. We're about to launch something in just absolutely incredible that's needed. Um, Peaceful Savage Nation. We have a Facebook group. We're officially launching March 1st. So if you go to Facebook, click on groups, type in Peaceful Savage Nation, it should pop up. This is a brand new group, guys. I want to grow this community, and I think that um, it is a much needed community. So when you go there, read the about section. If, it, if it's something you vibe with, if it's something you could see yourself aligning with, then at that point, please join. I don't want just anybody joining, right? This isn't about the numbers. I want you to read the about section. If you feel that you align with everything there, then definitely join and, and feel free to reach out to me, guys. Let's connect. All right, y'all stay blessed, stay savage.